This is John Cole with OKBroad.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. I'm here with my beautiful girlfriend, Lauren, today. And hopefully we're going to help you out in this episode. As you guys know, the holiday season is upon us, whether that's Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, or whatever holidays you guys celebrate. One of the biggest things around the holiday time is social get-togethers, when you have to spend time with your family and other friends and people from work that actually don't eat the way the same the same way you guys do and they may not understand it completely so you know I've been going through this now for over 20 years going to different family events for years so I've figured out how to deal with it myself but I know a lot of you guys might be new and it's always good to have a refresher course before you get thrown right into the thralls of family and friends who don't quite understand and think you're from outer space or think you're weird so do you have any comments, Lauren, about this? Uh, yeah, I mean, this has been probably the single most difficult thing that I've dealt with since going vegan four years ago. So I'm glad we're talking about it today. And I'm asking some questions that have come up, maybe for me or other people, to John in this video today. Cool. Well, before we get into your great questions, Lauren, because I know you thought <laughs> long and hard about them, I want to share with you guys some... Um, some tips, right, before we get, in, get into the questions and we'll have Lauren share some of her tips. So probably my first tip, number one, is that you want to try to focus events for the holidays, like not around food, right? Try to talk things up other than food to like, you know, not bring food up as the main thing. And the other thing that you want to do is you don't want to try to convince anybody about your diet and that they should eat vegan or raw or whatever because they're just going to think you're whacked out, try to just like mind your own business. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a tip, Lauren, or want to expand I, on that? I agree with everything John said, and I also feel like there's times that come up when people ask you about things, or you feel like a really strong feeling, like you want to say something, but I feel like if you, if you do say something, um, I don't know, I think it's important to express yourself instead of suppress, but to do it in a really compassionate, calm way and be understanding and respectful to everybody and want nothing to do with convincing anyone of anything, just kind of just getting something off your chest in a non-violent communication kind of way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Alec, that's <laughs> definitely excellent for sure. Uh, another thing I would say for you guys is, you know, if you guys are going someplace to eat, there's two ways you could handle it. Number one is you could actually eat in advance, so actually you're not eating, and maybe bring a few drinks with you to have something in your hand so you feel like you're a part of it. Maybe this goes for like work events or when you're going to a restaurant, or, you know, especially if you're going to a restaurant, call ahead and see what they have that you could actually eat. Most restaurants, actually, you could get a salad. Um, dressings are probably more difficult at restaurants, so you might want to, like, bring your own. Like, I've brought in my dressing already pre-made, blended up, and, you know, order a salad and then just kind of carefully when nobody's looking, kind of, like, pour it out. And then, like, <laughs> so I actually have something decent to eat, you know, when I'm getting a salad. And, you know, always one of the things for when ordering at the restaurant is, you know, uh, let the waiter know. You could, number one, uh, tip them in advance because, hey, give your waiter or waitress a tip in advance. Say, hey, I know you're going to give me excellent service. And then let them know your special needs. Like one of the things I've learned a long time ago is that, say, uh, my doctor says I need to eat these foods for my diet, you know, for my health. And then they'll be kind of tend to, you know, take care of you more because, oh, it's a doctor that says you got to eat these special foods, even if it's your friend who's a chiropractic doctor, as in my situation. Um, and then, oh, the other thing is uh, eat in advance or call in advance a restaurant. And if you guys are going to like some kind of potluck, like we will be going to a potluck actually uh, for Thanksgiving, you know, we're actually bringing several dishes ourselves. So at least we'll have our own food to eat for ourselves. And then also we're bringing extra so that we could share the wealth, share the fresh fruits and fresh vegetables that we'll be enjoying ourselves and let other people include them as well because probably most people are, won't be eating enough fruits and vegetables in my opinion. Anything to add to that? Uh, uh, well, I guess just when you were talking about the restaurant, I like whenever I go out to restaurants and you know I don't want to make a scene. <laughs> I always call the restaurant because I know people kind of get 
annoyed if like I ask the waiter questions and stuff because like they don't list the ingredients so I kind of want to know it but I don't want to ask so I always call ahead and I ask all my crazy questions you know behind the scenes so that's what I, I like to do when I go to restaurants. Yeah, I don't, I don't personally mind making a scene, but um, it might be good to call in advance and actually pre-order and let them know you're coming in so they can actually have it ready for you so they're not, you're not scrambling at the last minute. I mean, that's another good idea. Right. Any other tips, Lauren, for people to deal with uh, the holidays? Oh, well, I think these questions will be good. Good. I mean, I, I go over a lot, of, a lot of stuff, so we can just get into the questions if you want. All right, sure. So let me go ahead and first make a few more points is, you know, no matter what, I, I would encourage you guys to come from a sense of uh, compassion and a love, you know, when you are at your holiday events, whether that's with your friends, your family, or coworkers, right? Um, you're not there to argue, you're not there to win any battles, you know, like Lauren's going to ask probably some questions that might be a bit difficult to answer. <laughs> and, you know, one of my things is just try to deflect and change the topic. Also remember, you know, the fact that um, you could always just say, hey, I'm, I'm just eating this special diet for my health. And just stop there, don't go into this thing how, like cooked foods are bad or animal foods are bad and all this kind of stuff. You don't want to just get into arguments, change the su subject. If you're into football, talk about football, talk about the sports game, talk about the weather, talk about anything else other than food to just move the topic away from that because people are probably going to attack you because if you're doing something different than them, you know, they're feeling a bit weird and they want to know that they're right and you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, like, so I was listening to John, I was thinking, like, I feel like it's really compassionate and loving to have this um, kind of hold space mm -hmm. for people's differences and just say or give the message, this is what I'm doing, this is what I love, this is what lights me up, you do what lights you up and I totally hold space and support you. I don't know that's more like loving and then they're more um, willing to connect with you if you have that kind of vibe. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, hey, let's get into your questions. I'm waiting. <laughs> okay. All right, so we already answered the first one. The first one was a super general question. How do you navigate? This is like probably going to be the title of the video. How do you navigate Thanksgiving as a vegan, raw vegan? We kind of already Right, yeah, bring your own food, um, eat in advance, if, that, if you could get away with that and you wouldn't feel weird about doing that. But yeah, bring your own food and actually share, so actually bring extra food for everybody so that they could, you know, get inspired and love. And make sure if you bring in something, make sure it tastes good so that they're not like, ew, that's some weird-ass dish. You can say, <laughs> oh, I just brought an amazing salad or I brought some amazing pasta, you know, zucchini noodles and a nice dressing on there and make sure if you're taking it to like a Thanksgiving or whatever event with other family members, you gotta add some more salt, guys. I mean, I don't like to add a lot of salt to stuff, but you gotta add salt because most people's like taste buds, they like things salty. <laughs> Great. All right. All right. <laughs> Next good. question. Uh, okay, question number two. So I'll try to keep the subject off of food, but what if there's a situation where I feel like I just have to say something? Like what would be an example? Uh, I don't know, okay, um, if someone says something about what you're doing or makes fun of you a little bit or, um, says something that you know, like, you just don't agree with at all, like, um, you know, you're not, you're not, you can't be healthy as a vegan or something, I don't know. So, I mean, I always, one of the things I try to deflect, so number one, try to change the subject if you don't think that'd be appropriate, like, try to turn the question around and ask them. So, like, if they say, where do you get your protein? And then you could say, well, where do you get your antioxidants? Where do you get your fiber? Where do you get your fiber, right. <laughs> you know, so you could say, like, uh, it's, what was the question again? Where do you... Uh, I'll try to keep the subject off food, but what if there's a situation where I feel like I just have to say something? Right. So, you know, if somebody starts questioning you about like nutritional things, just flip the question back on them. Like, well, where do you get your protein or how do you know this or, you know, because most people, they think they know a lot of stuff, but especially if you guys are in a raw and being vegan, I'm sure you guys have done a lot of research to make sure you're doing it the best way possible. And, you know, I mean, if they're eating junk food, they're eating animal foods in excess, that's just simply not healthy, but you can't like get in an argument with them. 
So I mean, I'd prefer if people aren't like really up to data on the science, like don't even go there. It's just, just gonna yeah. cause issues. So I would just try to deflect, ask them a question back. You could say, hey, I'm just doing this for my health or my doctor recommended this and I'm just doing it for me. And then share your results. Don't say what, what could happen to them. Oh, if you go raw vegan, you could, you know, control your blood sugar better. You could, you know, um, have less incidence of cancer. You could actually reverse heart disease, the number one killer in America. Don't like going to all that stuff. You're just asking for trouble. But say, hey, through this diet, I've lost 10 pounds. Through this diet, I've, you know, gotten my blood pressure under control. Through this diet, I've gotten off my diabetes medication. And just don't, like, put it on them. Put it on how it affected you positively. And then just shut up. <laughs> Good. Okay. All right. Question number three. Uh, what if someone in your family is really, really sick and they're talking to you about all their health problems how do you gauge whether or not you just don't say anything at all or if you want to just say a little bit of something, how would you gauge that? Yeah, so I mean, I think that depends <laughs> on the situation and the person. If you've gotten in conflicts with this person in the past and they're just kind of egging you on to like, and you know they're just doing it to kind of like egg you on, then I would probably, once again, deflect, change the topic, change the subject, don't even talk about it. I mean... If, if I'm in a situation, I'm like really well versed on all this stuff. So like anybody could bring anything on and I try to use actually some of the things I'm sharing with you guys is like ask them a question back to get them thinking, you know, um, or I mean, if I had to go there, what I would say is that, you know what, there's a lot of good documentaries online at this time in this day and age on Netflix, for example. I mean, if you're really interested in health and what I'm doing, I would recommend watch like actually the movie called What the Health <laughs> and you could learn a lot and recommend some other, you know, fat, sick and nearly dead on Netflix and let people put the ball in their court, but you're not like attacking them. You're going to let the movie do all the work for you. <laughs> I think that's probably one of the best things you guys could do yeah. and then change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, question number four. Oh, okay. Um, some of these questions are hypothetical, some of them I feel like I've, you know, been in this situation from time to time, but I feel like I've kept quiet um, as a vegan with my family, and that seems to be something that people advise, just keep quiet. Um, but in some ways, it, I feel like it might even be backfire because I'm not saying anything and I'm being almost too private about it and then people still form little stories in their heads maybe maybe not <laughs> but it might build up some tension over time so I guess the question is like how do you continue to express yourself authentically while people you know, with people that are very different or think what you're doing is very weird. How can keeping quiet not backfire on you? I think the only way it really <laughs> can backfire if it's in your mind that you really want to say something and you don't, so then you feel suppressed. Yeah. And so I think even changing that mindset from the get-go is that, you know what, I'm all right not saying anything. It's all right that my family's not eating healthy. It's, you know, they make their own choices in their life. We can't control what other people do. And as much as it sucks and as much as you love your family and you want them to eat healthy, they're not doing it. You know, just remember, they're not in the space or ready to make the change. I mean, all of society is telling them one thing and then you're just the weird out person that's telling them something different that nobody else that they know of agrees with or does. I mean, it, it's almost like you're just going to you're going to create enemies. And I've done that before with, you know, family and cousins and second cousins and aunts and uncles when I was kind of like belligerent in my younger years with like how bad eating meat is, you know, and they're still eating meat to this day. Like what I did did nothing to change them. So I think, you know, like living by example is the best thing you could do because year after year they'll see you, you know, you'll still be a fit, trim, healthy weight. You'll be in good health. And then they're going to start having all these medical problems. And maybe one day if you're lucky, they might say, well, hey, John, I'm really interested in what you're doing. What, what are you really doing? And then you could recommend some, like, movies, but don't go into some long spiel about, you need to do this, 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 or whatever. You know, send them to some YouTube videos. Send them to some Dr. Gregor videos, you know, on, on whatever the topic is, you know. Yeah. But um, I wouldn't, like, try to get any debates with family or anything because then for the rest of the year, they might not even talk to you. And that's just not worth it, not even to go there. And so I would rather just avoid the situation of all the people I've talked to and, 
um, lessons I've learned. I mean, that's just, it's easier to shut up and just but be all right with it. Say, you know what, I'm not going to say anything, and this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to I'm going to feel good about it because <laughs> it, it could cause more problems than solutions. And I guess if you have to say something, just do it the way, well, you've talked about several times in a nonviolent way. <laughs> as best you can. And then yeah. stop and shut up. Because I've done like where I've suppressed and I feel horrible later. Like I, sh I should have said something in a nice way. Like so, it's difficult sometimes. Yeah, no, it's, it's quite <laughs> difficult. So, uh, okay, number five. Um, Okay, <laughs> so, so uh, a lot of people into alternative living might be into eco-friendly living too. So what if your family um, likes to use the plastic plates, <laughs> the plastic forks, and they throw everything away? I know this is a silly question, but would it be inappropriate to offer to recycle some of it or, I don't know, that may or may not come up <laughs> sometimes. Wow, you think of all the questions, Lauren, I'm sure some of you guys have had this situation. I mean, yes, by all means, you know, it pains me when somebody's actually eating animal carcasses and I see that because it's just a waste of literally life and the environmental, negative environmental impact and the impact on their health. But even worse, like plastic, disposable plastic forks and styrofoam plates and all these things are horrific to the, to the planet, right? And... It's like sad, but you could only do so much. You could control what you do in your house. You know, if you're having the event in your house, yes, by all means, use real dishware. You know, if it's at somebody else's house, you can offer to bring the table where, hey, you know, I'll be glad to bring the, the plates and the, and the knives and forks, and you could get bamboo ones, and, you know, at least they're going to break down versus, like, plastic ones that won't. And be aware of those, like, eco-friendly, you know, whatever plastic that's compostable. I mean, they unless properly composted, they don't really break down. Let's not fool ourselves. I've tried to put in my composter. But, like, I wouldn't try to, like, bring a recycling bag yeah, to somebody else's I house. I mean, what, that's just going to think you're weird and all this stuff. But I would, you know, bring better alternatives or even bring my dishware or yeah. even donate a set of dishware and do the dishes and stay afterwards or something. I mean, that would be... Because that's like you're helping out versus you're helping out versus you're being weird and you're trying to take all the recycling stuff yeah. <laughs> and be Santa Claus. I don't know. Yeah, I guess just to be subtle about it, you could just bring your own dishes like you would any pot. Well, like. yours, no, but offer to bring yeah, for other people to say, hey, you know, I'll bring all the, all the dishware so you don't have to bother with it. So turn it around to make it an advantage for them. Like, oh, yeah, okay, I don't have to buy all that stuff. John's going to yeah. bring it. And then you just bring, like, good stuff, you know, that actually will break down or whatever and... Hopefully it gets composted, but don't don't take it away, okay? Just bring it, but don't take it away. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, question number six. This is more of a hypothetical question. My family's paleo. <laughs> what, if, what what do I do if they try to debate me? So once again, you want to try like, not to debate. That's the prime directive of like. <laughs> the prime directive is not debate. And, you know, I mean, I guess the other thing I'd say is, like, if you know people are paleo that you're going to, like, there's rarely many good videos on YouTube really debating paleo and why it's, like, maybe not the best diet, in my opinion. Um, so you could get versed up on that if you really want to get into battle, but I, I, I prefer, <laughs> like, not to go there. So what I would do instead is I would try to encourage and support good things about paleo like you know paleo people are they're getting rid of all the processed food all the junk food yeah you know and uh, hopefully they're eating lots of vegetables because paleo people if we look back in the history paleolithic people really ate lots of fiber like more than maybe even some raw food is these days because they had all these tough fibrous plant foods to eat and they yes they totally ate meat i won't deny that but they ate meat in such small quantities when they could catch it so, I mean, if you want to be smart-ass, you could be like, oh, did you catch your deer like the paleo people? Or, you know, and yeah, they went down to the store and they just bought it pre-packaged and it's full of hormones and, you know, literally bad death thoughts and all these things. And I don't know. It's The paleo dads, I don't agree with it. But, but you don't want to like argue. At a certain point, like 12,000 years ago, they were started to eat meat. But before that, we don't even look at or right. they were predominantly plant eaters and they ate bugs or something. Yeah, no, of I, course. I, I mean, they're picking out a certain <laughs> specific period, period of time to emulate, 
And also the thing is the lifespan of pe people that are paleo are, all, you know, they didn't have to live, they don't live as long. So I mean, and, you know, eating too much meat and uh, junk food, which hopefully they've eliminated, shortens your life and actually causes disease. So once again, you know, <laughs> they may have amazing benefits from paleo because just by cutting out the junk food alone, right, people have lost weight, but not to say that that's the healthiest diet, but for them, it's serving them. Hopefully at a, at a certain point, they're going to start having some health challenges like hopefully. high blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not, but it depends how you do paleo. See, like if you do paleo and do lots of vegetables and a little bit of meat or animal products, like... That could actually be quite healthy and sustainable. Not that I'm necessarily recommending that, but hey, you know, my goal is to get people to eat more fruits and vegetables and less uh, animal products and or eliminate them and especially the junk food, even vegan junk foods. Like, I'm not a big fan of that either. We want to just eat real food. Good. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, this was a question someone asked. Okay, what if, uh, what if when you do, I don't know, I think I know what you're going to say, I think we've already kind of gone over it, but what if you do ask something about the food and you notice your family members or friends get really short with you, like they're really annoyed that you asked what was in the food or if something was organic or something, what would you do in that situation? So if they're short with you and just being sad, like, ah, John's asking if it's organic again and he does this every time. Because <laughs> such, so like, ah. So, I mean, I would recommend you guys be snoopers. <laughs> you know, I've went at different events I've been to. I, like, go through the trash to, like, see the package the food came in without telling anybody until they notice that I'm doing that and then they try to kick me out. But, uh, <laughs> but like, just fig try to figure it out yourself. Read the ingredient labels without trying to bother anybody. Or, or the other thing is, you know, just bring everything you're going to eat. Bring it yourself so that you know what's in it so you don't have to ask. If you know that this is a potential problem, people are going to be like, oh, and they're going to think you're weird. Yeah, I mean, or maybe even just whisper to somebody you know won't do that. Ask, is it vegan? Yeah, ask the <laughs> husband or the wife if, if the other person doesn't know. But, I mean, the other thing is, like, even if they say it's vegan, do you trust them? Yeah. I mean, they might be joking with you. So, like, I personally at a potluck, like, unless I could notify, I could see what's in it or there's an ingredient card, like, if I go to a potluck, like, I, I don't eat it. If there's like something suspect, I'm like, I'm just, I'm not going to eat it if it's that important to you. Because like, I, I've been to potlucks where like, I mean, even some raw potlucks that I've been to that I know the ingredients, I'll eat it, I'll feel like really not good afterwards. So, I mean, just, it, it depends on you. Like, and it's like, life is not perfect if you, if you know, you eat something that's not vegan, but the rest of the stuff's vegan or plant-based or raw. Like, I wouldn't really worry about it. It's not the biggest thing in the world. Just get back to your program the next day. And, you know, some people like to have, like, a holiday. During the holidays, it's like, all right, I eat mostly healthy, but I have a few chicken or turkey or whatever, a little bit, little piece to fit in. And, you know, that's totally up to you. You know, I don't necessarily say you got to be all this or all that, but if, if eating a small bit of turkey so that you're included and everybody thinks you're cool and you feel all right with that, do it. You know, a little bit of turkey <laughs> in every other day of the year you're eating plant-based, it's not the end of the world. Not that I would do that, but, you know, everybody needs to make their own decision. I mean, I know Lauren wouldn't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And one more question. This is ending on a positive note. Uh, what would you say is your best advice and number one way to make the holidays enjoyable as a vegan or raw vegan? I guess you've already gone over it. More enjoyable. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, like, don't focus around food. Like, bring a board game or if your family likes to do different events or watch, you know, TV or, I mean, like, try not to focus around the food. I mean, I think that's it because the holidays are not around, shouldn't be around food. They should be about celebration, getting together and, you know, checking in with each other that you haven't seen your uncle or aunt for the whole year that now you're seeing them during Thanksgiving and you, it's time to catch up on other things in their life that don't involve food. I mean, I think that's probably my best tip. It's, it's unfortunately many people into raw foods and veganism tend to focus like their whole lives around food. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if food's quite important. I mean, it, it's what fuels you. It's what drives you. It's what's going to basically uh, determine your long-term health. And so it, maybe it's good to, for you guys also to take a break from it for a day. <laughs> Do you have any comments or thoughts, uh, Laura? Uh, no, I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving and Christmas this year and, <laughs> and using all of these tips. <laughs> all right, cool. So 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. I don't think I have any other tips I want to give right now, but basically do the best you can. You know, nobody's ever perfect. Try to always come from a loving, compassionate place. Uh, bring your own food, super important. Share it with others. Um, bring your own tableware and all this stuff, or offer to bring tableware for everybody else also. And always come from a place where you're trying to help other people out. Hey, you know, I'll take some of the load off you from having to prepare everything. I'll bring a couple of dishes, you know, and bring a thing of fruit, you know, bring a salad, which are normal, and maybe bring some juices so you could have a bunch to eat and bring a nice fancy raw food dessert. Everybody loves, that's the trick there. Everybody always loves raw food desserts. If it tastes sweet and it's good, and you add they're going to love it. Some <laughs> sort of sugar, some sort of salt, and some sort of fat. Mix it together, it's probably going to be pretty good. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, the raw food desserts I've brought to different events like this, always a winner. Salads, mm, could go either way, you know, but uh, yeah, the, the desserts are the winner. <laughs> All right, so okay. anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode, want Lauren and I to do more episodes like this in the future. I actually had fun, yeah, it was fun yeah, sharing all the too. tips and I get nervous. going back and forth. It's all right. <laughs> it's okay. good. Anyways, if you liked it, hey, and you want Lauren to do more, give a thumbs up. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you'll be notified of my new and upcoming episodes I'm coming out about every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And if you are already subscribed, be sure to click that little bell button down below the video because that means you will be notified uh, when I do come out with a new video because I think YouTube changed that recently. And also be sure to check my past episodes. I actually have a, really, a, a few episodes that I'll put a link in the description down below for our previous Christmas and holiday you know, uh, recipe ideas and uh, times I've uh, also made videos similar to this one but a little bit different. That might also help you guys out. So anyways, I want to wish you guys a happy holidays, whatever holidays you guys celebrate. Once again, this is John Kohler and Lauren <laughs> with OKRaw.com. <laughs> we'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.